Hey guys, Brian from Wooden Creations here. Today, I'm gonna show you how to upgrade your E3 CNC, Y assembly, and Z spindle kit with the new upgraded kit from Bob CNC. Go ahead and stay tuned, I'll show you how to do it. We need to disassemble the Y and Z assembly. The fastest way I found to do it was from my cordless impact. I start by removing the helical coupler that allows me to remove the Z stepper motor. The stepper motor is held on by smaller screws, which required a smaller Phillips head screwdriver. Next, it's just a matter of removing screws and nuts that hold the assembly together. If you notice, I'm using a telescoping magnet to help me remove the nut after I've unscrewed the bolt. This tool is extremely helpful, again later in this project when I rebuilt the Y and Z spindle assembly. Next, I remove the two screws that hold on the bit duster and continue unscrewing the rest of the bolts and nuts, holding it all together. In this shot, I spin two crescent wrenches in opposite directions to release the bearing they're holding. Once done, I then pull the rod out. Once this is done, you'll need a large Phillips head screwdriver to back the four bolts out of the SG20U bearings that hold it onto the rails. Surprisingly, there was enough tension on the bolts, I didn't need to put a wrench on the other side. Now that the Y assembly is off the E3, it's just a matter of removing the rest of the nuts and bolts and piling them up for use again during the rebuild of the new Y assembly. I found a magnetic mechanic tray does an excellent job of holding the bolts and screws as I take it apart. I found that the nut sometimes gets lodged in the slot. An easy way I found to remove them is to use a flathead screwdriver to pick them out. I found that the bearings had sawdust caked on them, so I blew them off with my air compressor, then soaked them in WD-40. Off camera, I then patted them dry with a paper towel. The instructions say apply dry lube such as graphite, teflon, or silicone to the threads of the threaded rod. I don't personally own any of these, but I do own some marine grease. And while I wouldn't recommend it over Bob's suggestions, I will tell you, it's been on my E3 since day one, and I've never had an issue with the previous spindle setup. To start the build, thread the coupler nut on the threaded rod. Then add the washers on both sides of the nut. Note you'll want to start the coupler nut on the opposite side of the threaded rod that has the flat spot ground into it. Once this is all in place, I then apply grease to the threaded rod. After coating it in grease, I knock off any excess and insert the washer and nut assembly into the Z-frame sport slots. Make sure during this process that the coupler nut and rod are as straight as possible. Then position the second Z-frame support on top of the washer and nut assembly. Now set the tabs of the Z-frame supports in the corresponding Z-frame slots, and then tighten down a zip tie to hold down the coupler nut. Now that the rod is set, it's time to add some nuts and bolts. I'm using the blue Loctite, which is known as the non-permanent Loctite. can be picked up at Walmart or any hardware store. A quick roll on the tip of the threads is enough to lock it into place for years to come. From here, we place the Z spindle bottom mount in the Z frame and secure with 5 M4 by 16 screws. The most care needs to be given during the removal of these screws. You don't want the black mount and spindle shaft to slip out of the yellow housing. Holding it as I am will keep everything from falling out as you make the switch to the new base. The next step has to be placed in the Z spindle mount on the Dewalt just like this picture, then sliding it down until it will line up with the holes on the main mount. Once I was able to get a couple screws holding the Dewalt from falling apart, I then added Loctite to each one of the screws, one at a time. The last thing we want to do is add the SG20U bearings. These need to go on a certain way. We want the hub facing away from the bolt head. So bolt into the bearing, hub away from the head, then washer, then inside the wood hole, then another washer, then the nut. We'll do this four times in this order. The 
at this point, don't worry about tightening it as we'll do it once it's back on the rails. I finger tighten it for now so it won't fall off. By now you should have all four bearings on and this completes the Z-spindle mount assembly. When building the Y carriage, we start by placing the Z-rail supports into the Y carriage frame and secure them with screws and nuts. Next, we add the Y carriage side supports and then screw them in. Once the Y carriage rails are on, it's time to attach the Y carriage bottom support followed by the Z-rail stop. When it came to attaching the belt retainers, I have to admit I got tripped up and put them on upside down, which they're pretty hard to get back off later once it's fully assembled. So let me show you how to correctly put them on. As you can see in the picture, the teeth point away from the box end we just closed off. In other words, the teeth point towards the opening we have not closed yet, as shown in the second picture. Make sure the openings are positioned just like it's shown here, as we have to stick belts in these later. To add the bearings to the carriage, we take a bolt and add a washer and stick it in the hole. To speed things up, I've added all the washers to the bolts ahead of time. Next, add a washer to the bolt on the opposite side of the carriage. Now we add the bearing, making sure the hub, which is the metal lip that sticks out, is facing the wood side. Add the other three bearings hub side down the exact same way, then add the nut to all four bolts. Again, remember to add Loctite to the threads. When it comes to tightening the four bearings, these two need to be tight, and the other two at the bottom just snug, as you have to work it onto the rails later, so it should be somewhat loose. The wooden wrench provided did an excellent job and never failed me. I have plenty of real wrenches, but they had the night off with this handy tool that came with the kit. Now it's time to slide the Z-rails into place. I found both slid in very easy. Once it's in place, slide the Z assembly bearings over the Z rails. They'll slide in with a little pressure, but go on with a precision fit. At this point, I went ahead and snugged all four inner bearings tight against the rail. Next, slide the bearing bottom plate over the threaded rod. Attach it with screws and nuts. Thread a 5 16 inch nut on the threaded Z rod, then slide the bearing on behind it, followed by another 5 16 inch nut on top of the bearing. To protect the threads, I cover them in a paper towel as I work the first nut down. The nut crossing the bare spot did provide a little bit of a resistance, but I was able to get past it. Once in place, the instructions state to have six threads visible at the end before locking the two nuts against the bearing tight. Now I slip on the middle bearing plate and then the top bearing plate over it. Then use three longer M4 by 25 screws and put a nut on the end of the bolts. Being I'm upgrading the E3, my stepper motor and power cord were still all secured to the CNC. So it's time to rejoin the carriage with the CNC. Attach the stepper motor to the stepper motor mount with the four screws that were originally on the E3. You'll notice I got a little antsy and put the carriage on the rails a little too early in that last scene. So here's video of that. You'll also notice it's missing the stepper motor we just put on. Let's just say I had to take it back apart because I got a little too excited and skipped a step and couldn't get the stepper motor screws on underneath. So I dismantled it and put them on after this scene. Now in regards to the carriage going on the rails, it's a tight fit. I have the bottom bearings loose, but you're going to have to wiggle and put some pressure on it. But Bob did his math. It does fit. Just take your time. Next, we attach the helical coupler to the stepper motor. 
Set the stepper motor mount in place. Align the flat spot on the motor shaft with the set screw of the helical coupler and tighten both set screws securely. Then slide on the stepper motor into the coupler. Tighten it again with the Allen wrench against the stepper motor's flat spot. Then reattach the vertical Z-stop switch on the side. The final thing we need to do is reattach the belt to the new carriage. Using needle nose pliers seems to be the easiest. Stick the belt into the belt retainer. Make sure to fill the entire length of the retainer with the belt. It may take a few minutes of forcing it, but it'll go. Take the belt under the right pulley, then back to the other side and stretch it over the left pulley and then back down. I use pliers once again to help stretch it tight and back into the retainer. I then tighten down all the screws on the retainer. With the Y and Z upgrade complete, it's time to check our work and see how it does. I created a funny CNC meme for the test. I found that the Z-Rod worked awesome for raising and lowering the router, and the fact that I wd 40 the bearings, well that made the carriage run way smoother than it did before the upgrade. I think I'll wd 40 the gantry bearings as well in the future. The sign came out great, but I still need some work on learning how to paint. Thanks all for watching the video, and you guys enjoy your new upgrade. Thank you.